Hello there! I'm just hanging around in Ibusuki on the island of Kyushu and I'm just enjoying, you know, a little old sand bath. And I'm going to be going on a great adventure here in Kagoshima and I'm going to learn all about the local foods and eat some local katsuobushi and go to the factory. It's minus 50, my hands are really, really starting to hurt now. And I'll even have some flowing noodles to cool down at the end. But before we go, don't forget to subscribe for more really awesome Japan adventures like this one. So let's go! Katsuobushi is an irreplaceable part of traditional Japanese cuisine, which is known as washoku. And it's used in a wide variety of traditional dishes, and it provides that fundamental umami flavor to Japanese dishes. And today I have a chance to see how this katsuobushi is made in real life in the factory. So this is where they freeze the katsuo fish. So we're gonna go inside. I think I'll be fine because I'm from Canada and our winters are that cold, but I wasn't uh, expecting to have to go in in sandals. Oh, it's snowing. <laughs> See, there's <laughs> ice falling. So we are now in the freezer for the katsuo and it's minus 30 degrees in here. It's very cold, um, definitely not dressed appropriately. I'm wearing sandals, um, like a crop tank top. It's pretty cold in here. Oh, and I have a wet towel that we're gonna play with and it's already freezing. It's getting a little crunchy, but we're gonna go into minus 50 next. It's icy in here. Okay, we're gonna spin the towel. Are you ready? No. <laughs> the cameraman doesn't wanna come in. Here we go. Okay, here we go. We're gonna spin the wet towel. It froze! <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> it's right. minus 50, okay. my hands are really, really starting to hurt now. Right. Go. We're all gonna okay. escape. <laughs> Woo! Oh, Woo! Oh my okay, god! Okay. He closed the door on me! <laughs> I almost got locked in! <laughs> this is a lot of fun, but it's really cool. And now it's hot! Wow! Making katsuobushi is a surprisingly lengthy and time-consuming process. The whole process takes a total of about six months just to make the katsuobushi. It starts by processing the actual bonito fish. Next, the fish is taken to the smoking factory. Inside the smoking factory, the fish is smoked for one month in this really cool smoking chamber. And after one month, it is taken out and they add a special type of healthy mold bacteria, which helps to ferment the fish. What this bacteria does is it actually eats the moisture and the fat in the fish to help dry it out. And they do this process out of the smoker in the sun. And then they'll take it back inside and they'll let it sit and they put it in a cool, dark place where the bacteria can actually just absorb the water and they can eat the water from the air instead of eating the fish. And then you have the finished product where it is rock hard and it's ready to be shaved down and grinded. I cannot believe that this is a fish. It just, it looks like stone, like polished stone, and it feels so smooth like granite. Ah, so this <laughs> the table's moving a lot. It looks like pencil shavings. But this is the dried fish flakes. So let's give this a try. This is the finished product, the Bonita flakes. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. So at first, you can't really taste anything. It's just kind of like dry. Um, and then after as you chew and you're, you add more moisture to it as you're chewing, this umami flavor comes out and it tastes like 
a lot of Japanese soups because they use bonito flakes in the broth. Mm -hmm. What is this? Mugi miso. Mugi miso. Yes. In the middle of the ガワレルあの、ものですね。あ、すごい。ヘルシーですね。これにえ、鰹節を入れてお湯を注ぐと茶節という簡単な料理ができますね。ソースポーインホットワーターエンドユーハブアベリーヘルシーですね。これにえ
fish or mushrooms in the steamer. Um, I'm not exactly sure why, maybe it goes bad, and be careful of burns, because this stuff is super hot. Like even if it hits your face, it almost burns your face. And the cool thing is, it's like you pay by yourself, there's nobody here to monitor you, but it's the honor system, you pay 300 yen. So basically, under here, um, it's just covering all of the steam to keep it in, and you can cook your vegetables in there. So, I've got some okras, and they're actually really famous in this region, and I'm gonna try steaming them. They only take about two minutes. It's crazy hot, wow. These are some sweet potatoes. They're also a popular item to steam here, and they take about 20 minutes to make. These ones have almost finished cooking. We just took them out for a second to cook the other ones. It's time to do the eggs. Seven minutes is apparently the magic number. We're gonna put them in. Steam them for seven minutes to get like a hard boil, but just a little bit softer than a hard boil. It's fun, it's like cooking, but you don't really have to do anything. Let's check the okra. Ta -da! It looks good, it looks done. Let's take it out. It looks like there's flames coming out. It's blowing out. And you can even hear it, it sounds like there's a fire. It's just geothermal steam. There's our okra. All right, the eggs are ready. It's been seven minutes, let's open it up. Here we go, moment of truth, cha -da! Hey, these are the steamed eggs using geothermal heat. It looks great. All right, so we have the okra and the eggs. The eggs just came out of the steamer and they're incredibly hot. I've been told that they are best to eat piping hot. So I'm gonna do my best to eat it at this temperature that I can't even hold it <laughs> with my bare hands. Apparently this is how they do this here. They eat it like while it is burning hot. Super fresh. Wow, gorgeous color. And the very center is still just before hard boiled. But yeah, we did let it sit for a little bit. It looks so good. Let's try it with some salt. Unsen eggs. Mmm, that's actually really great. Yeah, I think it's the perfect consistency of a hard boiled egg just before too hard boiled. So you get a little bit like a gently gooey center, but it's still perfectly cooked. All right, it's time to try the baked potato. The potato that's been, it's a steamed potato, but it, it looks like a baked potato. Mm-hmm. Actually, I don't think I've ever really had a plain potato before, like with no butter, um, but it's good. It's a fluffy, perfectly cooked potato. Now it's time to try the okra. And this is a must try when you're here because Ibusuki is actually the number one producer of okra in all of Japan. So this is their famous food and I'm gonna, I'm really excited to try the local one. It's very fresh, refreshing. And I should note, it's not that hot anymore because we let it sit for a little bit. So it just tastes like a nicely steamed, tender okra, but still refreshing. It's really good. And if you've never had okra before, the little seeds inside, they kind of like pop in your mouth. It's a really cool texture. This has been a really cool experience. It does feel like barbecue atmosphere and it would be really fun to do with a bunch of friends. Just steaming your vegetables, steaming your eggs. And of course you can bring whatever seasonings you want to bring. Great activity to do with friends. Definitely give this a try. But I still want to eat some more food. So after this, uh, let's go find something fun to do and eat. <laughs> See you guys there. It is super, super hot now. So I've had to take off my jacket. It's the early afternoon and it's like, it's over 30 degrees. But what better timing for me to try some cooling, flowing noodles. But when I say flowing noodles, I don't mean the traditional nagashi somen where you use half of a bamboo shoot as a slide and you put your noodles on the top and it slides down. This particular restaurant here in Ibusuki invented a new style. It's called somen nagashi, not nagashi somen. And basically what it is is they use fresh spring water from the Tosen Gorge, which is right here. And they have a special system where the spring water comes to your table and and the noodles flow in a circular motion in the middle of your table. The entrance to the restaurant is surrounded by forest and you can hear the sound of the cicadas. The nature around the restaurant is so beautiful and you can see actually where the spring water comes out of the ground and they use spring water from this area 
inside the restaurant as well, although it is a cleaner version of it. This is really cool. Inside the restaurant, there's a place where you can drink fresh, clean spring water. Ooh, it fills up really fast. It's just the right temperature. It's not too icy cold, but it's still just cold enough to be super refreshing. It's not your average tap water, that's for sure. Oh, this is beautiful. Here's the famous table. It's got the flowing water in the middle. We've got our soma noodles ready to go. It's actually noticeably cooler down here. This is really comfy. I think this is a great place to come in the summer to cool down a little bit. This is the perfect temperature for a nice, refreshing summer lunch. My full meal is here. This is a set and it comes with inari zushi, which is really tasty. And this is a locally raised fish. It's called the masu, so we get a grilled fish with our meal. And then of course the star of the show is the somen, but we also have, I believe this is a miso soup. And before I do my somen nagashi, this is really important. This is the tsuyu. It's the broth or the sauce that you dip your noodles in. And what's really great about this is it's made using local katsuobushi. That it's the same katsuobushi we saw in the factory today. For your tsuyu, when you eat noodles, you can put some green onions in your tsuyu. And look at this, some fresh wasabi. Put a little bit of that in too. Now it's time to try the somen nagashi. Here we go. Get a nice scoop of noodles. That looks so good. Fresh somen noodles. Let's put them in the water, all right? First time for everything. Here we go. Farewell. This is so fun. I don't know why this is so entertaining. <laughs> Just see all of your noodles spinning around your table. So I think what's good about this, the, the whole purpose of putting your noodles in water is to keep it cool and refreshing. Okay, now it's time to fish them out since they've cooled down. It wasn't that hard, actually. You get quite a lot in one bite. This is the perfect amount for one bite, too. Okay, now we're gonna dip them in our tzuyu. That is so good. I love somen to begin with because it's such a refreshing summer food. The water chills it just enough, it's not icy. And the tsuyu is fantastic. Uh, the tsuyu is a little bit sweeter than what I'm used to in Tokyo area. In Kyushu region, they actually use a sweet soy sauce. And you can taste that umami from the katsuobushi. It's really good. Let's also try some inari zushi. One of my favorite foods. So as you can see on the inside, it is stuffed with sushi rice and it's got sesame seeds. Mmm. The, um, the actual tofu skin, it's not quite crispy, but it does taste a little bit fried, but it's been marinated in this sweet, um, I believe, mirin. And uh, the rice is a little bit sweet and sour because it's a vinegar rice, but it also, I think, has meaty in it, but it makes it sweeter. And there's little bits of sesame to give a little bit of fragrance. Honestly, all of the food is fantastic. This is such an incredible lunch or dinner. And especially in the summertime, this is a big 100% recommend, but you can also do this all year round, which is awesome. Definitely come give this a try. I legitimately cannot stop eating this. <laughs> What an incredible time I've had here in Ibuski, Kagoshima. It was really cool to be able to experience that small seaside town atmosphere. It's just such an adorable little town. It's so quiet and so peaceful. This is definitely an incredibly unique experience. If you want something that's just a little bit unique, a little bit off the beaten path, then uh, definitely check out some of the variety of tours that we have in Kagoshima. They're on byfood.com and the links are down below because they're a lot of fun. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And let me know in the comments down below if you guys would like to visit a small town like Ibuski because it is a magical place. I feel like I'm in a Ghibli movie or something. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you guys next time. Bye!